Welcome to the Preacher's Corner, a safe space where preachers can come together every week and share their unique perspectives on faith and wisdom, personal experiences, and biblical teachings. Tonight, we are featuring Miriam Matthews. Hello, everybody. Hello. It is such a blessing to be here. Um, I just, I thank God. Um, I just, I honor God. I, I just thank God that I am alive and well. I just want to give honor to Prophetess Miyoshi. Um, I, I just, I thank you, uh, Minister uh, Melissa. Um, and I'm just excited about what you, God has in store. He did place a word in my heart. And before we get started, I'm just going to say a quick prayer. Um, and if y'all can just touch and agree with me, come on. Dear Lord, I just thank you so much uh, for the word that you have stirring in my heart, Father. Lord God, I just thank you, Lord God, um, Lord God, for that I'm hidden, Lord God, in you, Father. Lord God, let your uh, people see you and not me, Father. We thank you for opening up the ears, Lord God, those that have an ear to hear what the Spirit of the Lord has to say, Lord God, let them hear, Father. I thank you, Lord God, that we will, Lord God, leave not the same way we came in, Lord God, Jesus that there is transformation that is happening. Chains are falling off, Father. Lord God, no matter where we are in our journey or our relationship with you, Father, I pray, Lord God, that through even through this message, we draw closer to you, Father. Lord God, anybody that is thirsty, Lord God, any that and one that is hungry, I thank you, Lord God, that there is spiritual food, Lord God. Lord God, Jesus, there is water that is going to quench somebody here tonight. So I just thank you, Lord God, have your way in Jesus' name. Amen. Amen. So I'm I'll try not to keep you too long um, in the message uh, that, you know, in partnership with the Holy Spirit, I'm like, okay, what do you want me to talk about today? Um, and what dropped in my spirit uh, was Philippians 2 and 6, y'all. And I actually had to go and look this up, you know? So uh, when I looked it up, uh, it says, uh, and it was talking about Jesus, um, God uh, being the very nature, so Jesus being the very nature of God did not consider equality with God something to be used to his own advantage. So not only did he drop this scripture, and let me just um, adjust my screen so I can see anything in the chat if needed. But anyways, um, as he dropped this scripture in my spirit, he, I also heard the word cultivation, a message, you know, give them a message about uh, cultivation. Um, so when I combined that word cultivation and just pressed in, even with this scripture right here, this scripture, again, is talking about Jesus, right? God in the flesh who came down and he, he, he died for us and he subjected himself to um, you know, to, to being like us, took on a human-like form. And although he did not deny uh, his uh, nature as God, uh, he did not take, he did not move forward with his own ambition. Even when you think about it in the garden of uh, Gethsemane, and I hope I'm saying that right, he said, look, Lord, if, if you could take this cup from me, come on, some of some of us are going through some challenges and we're like, Lord, I just want to come out of it. You know, I, I you know, when am I going to see the light at the end of the tunnel? You know, I'm in this I'm in this challenge. I feel like I'm in the same cycle. Maybe I'm feeling some degree of stagnation. You know, maybe I'm facing a storm. So anyways, Jesus is like, OK, if you would take this cup, there was some desire. There was an internal conflict for it to to uh, not have to go the way that it did. However, he knew that he was sent here on a mission. He sent himself on a mission and it was for us. And he said, if you know what, your will be done right? Your will be done. Um, and in order for us to fulfill our will, not fulfill uh, our will, but to fulfill his will, it takes um, a couple of things, right? It, so it's recognizing for one, many times we can be self fish, right? And this is not a con, you know, condemning, condescending type of message, but this is a message that, look, you know, anytime I get a message, Right. It's because he dealt with me first about it. So but many times we can be um, selfish or full of self. So I'm going to go into that. Um, but 
after becoming aware about, um, you know, our, our way of, of uh, preserving ourselves or our own ambitions, right? If we truly want to um, reach uh, the places that God uh, has planned for us, it's going to take not just not being selfish, but submitting and allowing for um, his process, which is sanctification. So I'm going to go through those three S's. And I just wanted to put that out there. Right. So just going back to Philippians two and six. Jesus being the nature of God, the very nature of God, God in the flesh did not consider his equality to God something to be used to, uh, to his own advantage, right? So God is wanting us to be cultivated. He wants us to grow in wisdom. He wants us to grow in stature and in favor. And there's something to say about this because even in the following verses, right? He knew the power that he possessed because he's God, right? But it's showing us that power with the right heart posture is the process to elevation. So sometimes we want to get to the top of the mountain. And I heard somebody say it this way. You can have a gift and people can be attracted to you because of your gift, but they can be repulsed by you because of your character. So then what is the point of you having just to end up um, actually occupied or, you know, or uh, as a res or, or just to end up misrepresenting, um, Jesus Christ in us, which happens a lot, right? Some of us end up have experienced church hurt, you know, some, uh, some individuals, I was just speaking to somebody today, um, who just really wanted to know more. And she connected, um, you know, with the church and, you know, and some, and this, these things happen. She connected with the church and, um, you know, she was asking questions about, um, you know, sexuality and these things like that. And instead of like just a open, um, just honest uh, conversation. And I think, that, you know, the members that she was asking these questions to just genuinely didn't know, um, didn't know the answer. They didn't know the answer, but instead gave her a lot of attitude. Um, so she took her questions that she had and uh, essentially she disconnected herself from the church or from that particular church. And then she got into occultic practices and, you know, started getting into the tarot reading cards and, and things like that. So, you know, God doesn't just want us to have a, a gift, you know, just for the sake of, OK, I'm just going to come out here and preach, you know, but my character is messed up, you know. Like when someone's asking uh, asking questions and they're exploring, um, which is OK to do, you know, even with Thomas. I know Thomas was doubtful. He asked questions, but, you know, he got to see a lot of things, too. You know, he got to, you know, like, look, you know, God said, bless are they that don't see, you know, bless are they that, that don't have to see in order to believe. But it's there's nothing wrong with asking questions and getting into exploring and into the exploration about who God is or who you are through him. You know, sometimes uh, we stop even asking questions because of fear of judgment. And y'all, I wasn't even planning on going this route, but that's where the Holy Spirit has me going. So there's something about character. It's not just about the gift, but also character. Uh, you know, it's, it's, it's character building season uh, so that you can handle the placement and the position that God wants you to be in. And it, as you allow him to develop you for that position, he can then trust the uh, trust that you can handle the assignment or the people that he has assigned to you. So I pray this is making sense. Right. So he's showing us. All right. I'm going to be I'm going to become a servant. Yes, I am God. I have all power and control, right? But I'm not going to put my own ambition or my own motive over that power because that is dangerous. That can be dangerous. Even um, when we look at the children of Israel, right? Their, uh, you know, their zip code change. I said the, the title of this message is what is your zip code? God is wanting to change our zip code so we're not just in the same place. 
You know, I hear a lot of people saying, you know, you know, I want to hear from God. I feel like I'm in the same place. I feel lost. You know, I, I'm, I'm having a battle of the mind. And uh, many of you know, I'm streaming into uh, some of my platforms as well. So many of you know, I'm a therapist and I'm a coach, you know, so we've been, you know, in the same zip code, even spiritually, it's possible to be a Christian for years and years and years, but still, you know, be on the milk. And it's not, it's okay to start off on the milk. It's okay to start off having that mustard seed of faith, but there is an expectation to grow. The children of Israel, right? Their physical um, zip code changed. Again, what did I say in the beginning? God is wanting us to grow. He's calling us to um, to to be developed. He he wants to place us in higher heights and higher positions, right? The children of Israel. Their zip code changed, but their soul and their mind was stuck in the place that he had delivered them from, right? And because their soul and their mind was still in Egypt, even though their physical bodies were not, it affected their heart posture. But I came to tell somebody that no matter the dilemmas that you're facing or the trials that you're going through that you're facing, it, it wasn't or isn't meant to actually disable you or it's not meant to constantly be a trigger to you. Sometimes we're, we're so triggered you know, and that's what we use in the clinical in the clinical field. Like we use that term triggered. I'm just so triggered. This triggered me. And I think there are like 2000 triggers. I mean, just imagine if we're just so triggered, you know, <laughs> I want to be trigger proof. And it's not to say that, uh, you know, we don't have emotions and we're not going to respond to certain things. And as a matter of fact, that, you know, there's a such thing as holy anger. Jesus showed it in the temple. You know, but I don't want to, you know, be so emotionally dysregulated that I end up responding to every little thing, every little probe of the enemy. You know, and the enemy many, many times is using people. Right. But those triggers aren't meant to just uh, bother us. Right. To the point that we're just constantly upset or constantly complaining or constantly irritated. But it's really meant to develop you and it, it's meant to train you for the position that he wants to place you in. So, again, he became a servant. And I'm just trying to drive that home. I pray this is making sense. All right. He, he, he became a servant. So the only way to become a true servant. Is to be meek and meekness is not weakness. It's the ability to be moldable, right? So that we can be cultivated. He was moldable so that he could be cultivated, right? It even said in scripture in Luke chapter two, y'all verse 52, he grew, Jesus grew in wisdom in stature and in favor with God and man. He grew in wisdom, in stature, and in favor with God and man. So to say that he grew means that he started from somewhere. This is God in the flesh. He started from somewhere. And so it suggests that the wisdom and the stature and the favor with God and man was obtained over time. He didn't have that same measure that he did at the end, you know, from the beginning. It grew. So we're supposed to grow. We're supposed to cultivate. We're supposed to develop over time. We're not supposed to be in that same zip code. Come on, somebody. So there was a process. So that process begins with not the selfishness. Sometimes we're used to that, right? And I'll get into why. But it, 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 it comes with denying oneself and submitting to God. Remember those S's. Right. Not selfishness, but submission and sanctification. So why do we need to deny ourselves? And that's because we can be full of self. You know, I, look, I, I'll go ahead and I'll be the first to raise my hand. We could be full of self sometimes. And sometimes the way this looked like for me is, oh, I don't know if I want to answer the call. You know, I'm too afraid. What I what if I stutter? I was like, Mama Moses, you know what I'm saying? Like, I, you know, I have a speech thing or, you know, what if I, I just mess up or I don't know. What if they reject me? What if they don't want to listen? What if people don't show up? And I remember tying my self-esteem to the performance of people, realizing later on that these are two different things. That even if people don't show up, that is OK, because there are individuals that are assigned to you. But I'm building your character, Miriam. I'm getting you ready, whoever is watching. Right. For the assignment that I have for you so that you can handle it. Come on. Little is much 
when God is in it. Don't despise small beginnings. Right. So why can why are we full of self sometimes? And that's because of our human capacity. And I talk about this a lot uh, in my groups. Um, our, our human because the way that our brains work is to focus on self-preservation and survival. You know, so it's a focus on the things that you need to do in order to preserve your own life. So therefore, when something tragic happens um, or there's some sort of challenge, the brain registers that information as a way to prevent that situation or that circumstance from happening again. So I, I wrote this example that it's like doing your hair with a, a, high, a hot iron and say you end up burning yourself. Your brain is going to register that um, that you burned yourself so that you can remember it and be careful the next time. So it, it is set on preventing it's set on inhibiting that scenario from reoccurring again. Come on, just follow me. Or even if you're on the grill, come on, you know, uh, some of my, of my guys or, you know, even my ladies, because I like to get on the grill. Like when you're when you're cooking something up outside on the grill and you end up burning yourself while you're lighting it up or something, your brain is going to register that. And it does that to prevent it from happening again. It's all about prevention, to stop it from happening again. So that's a good thing in a sense. So our brain is like this historica data operating system, right? That helps you. So when a future event, when you have these so same activities in the future, that scenario is going to pop right back in your head. It's going to remind you of the past as a way to keep you safe. Come on, remember that, that zip code scenario. Remember what happened when we were here in this zip code. Remember what happened when we were right here upstairs in the bathroom doing the hair. You know, remember, don't do that again, right? To prevent it from happening. Are you following me? Right? However, your brain is going to do this same thing with everything else. So what is everything else, Miriam? So if I was hurt by somebody, come on, if I experienced church hurt at this place, or, or if I was rejected by someone in the past, come on, if I was bullied here, my brain is has registered that information so that even when God is calling me into a new assignment, my brain is going to say, hold on, come on, it isn't safe, right? Do you remember what happened in, in second grade? Come on, when they made fun of you for asking that question, come on, do you remember, you know, that, that church event? Come on, at the, the, the youth event, when they didn't allow you to sit with them and they all coordinated their, their colors or their things. Come on, do you remember? Do you remember this, right? You were burned before. Come on, they rejected you. They mocked you and they made fun of you. So your brain is focused on safety and the comfort zone. It's, it's focused on the zip code of your comfort zone. But when you say no to your calling safety, According, you know, safety, your brain is saying safe, safe, safe. Safety then becomes stagnation. And now we're asking ourselves, why am I in the same place? Come on, 40 years, you know, later, I'm still here. The devil is a liar. They spent 40 years in the desert for a, for a trip that was only supposed to take 11 days. Come on, some of us need to um, switch, come on, convert from remembering what happened, remembering what happened, which is what the brain does, and we need a new revelation. Come on, so God's perspective and his eye is what we need to see ourselves from his point of view, because he's the one that has the plan. His way is not our way, and his thoughts are not our thoughts. So many times, right, we see from our perspective. And how things worked against us. But then the scripture is saying, oh, everything is actually working out together for your good and for the good of them that love God and are called according to his purpose. So when you like read that, it's like, hold on. I thought everything was happening against me. Oh, it's the worst day of my life. You know, like it's sometimes we say those things. It's like, oh, my goodness. Can I get a break? It's always something happening. Come on. Like, <laughs> I know I'm not the only one that's heard those statements or have even said some of those things, but he actually says everything's working together for your good. It's backwards to the mind. It doesn't even make sense. And that's why Paul says, you know, to be carnally minded when you're when you operate from your own thinking, your own wisdom. 
you can't accept the things of God. But the scripture is saying, you know, God is telling us, I want you to prosper even as your soul prospers. So even your soul has, you know, spiritual components to it. I made this post uh, recently um, where it's talking about this doctor years ago who was able to measure the soul. The soul has weight. Come on. Oh, I just thought about that. What is weighing your soul down? What are you weighed down about? Some of us are dealing with the spirit of heaviness. I come against it right now in Jesus name. We're heavy and we're we're just walking around, you know, just with these daggers and these arrows. Come on, hurt from 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 years ago. We're walking around with wounded souls. But he he was able to determine that the soul has weight. He um, he uh, took the weight of a human being that was alive and then um, one that had passed away. And he did that. He did that uh, over and over again. And I think the the weight of the soul came, comes to like 23, 23 grams, something like that. Twenty three or so grams. And they were able to um, actually use electromagnetic devices years later to prove that this is the case. You have a soul. Your soul is going somewhere. Come on, somebody. Come on. It's going to heaven. Amen. When you say yes, you know, Jesus, I want you to come into my life, you know, and I believe some somebody's going to give their their life to Christ tonight. Amen. Amen. And when that happens, by the way, even when one says yes, all of heaven rejoices. Do you know how deep it is up there? All of heaven, all of heaven rejoices when one says yes. You know, so he did the same thing. This doctor did the same thing with animals and the the weight did not change. Right. So we have a soul. Even so, David said, God restores my soul. Soul restoration allows for healing of those very things that hurt you in the past. So many of us, again, we're walking around hurt and heavy. And that is not your portion. And it's it's preventing you from prospering. I want you to prosper even as your soul prospers. So wait, prosperity in my relationships and my finances and the businesses, come on, entrepreneurship, uh, writing music, production, going into the acting industry, come on, fashion, all of those things. That's he wants us to dominate. Come on, all of the mountains of influence. Because the kingdom of of God is on the inside of you. But it's going to be, it's hard for that kingdom to come on, to come forth if I'm carrying weights from the past, right? God is trying to change our physical zip codes, our relationships, come on, our vehicles. And as long as we maintain those perspectives and we're leaning into our own understanding, we're going to be full of self. Right. And as long as I am full of self, I'm inhibiting my growth, the the wisdom, the stature and the favor. Again, remember, Jesus grew in these things. So if Jesus himself grew in these things, how much more do we need to and follow that example? Right. So that next S, the next key is to submit so that the next scripture says and being found in appearance as a man, he humbled himself by becoming obedient to death, even death on a cross. So when I just look at, you know, powerful prophets and, you know, individuals who are just, just being so greatly used by God and, you know, some of the very individuals that I, that I look up to, prophetess K, prophetess Miyoshi, you know, so many uh, uh, amazing uh, prophets. And I I wish I could see um, uh, the chat. I can't, you know, prophetess Ross, you know, I just, I prophetess Brittany, I, I, Keely, Deborah, I look up to so many uh, amazing uh, women of God, right? And I'm telling you, in, when, when, when God is using you powerfully and those that we're looking at, we're like, oh, you know, you know, I want to be there. I want to be there. You know, they are there because they've learned to submit. They've learned to surrender, right? And so it has nothing to do with being perfect. We can't even, we can't perfect ourselves. It's God that perfects us and it's through his process, all right? Who are you looking up to? And it's like, oh, I wish, you know, like I could be like this person or that person. When they've gone through a process, sometimes they're wanting to microwave mastery and it takes time. It takes time. 
You know what other scripture popped up um, is Jeremiah uh, 18, where they're talking about uh, the, the potter and the clay. Come on, it is a process, y'all. Because So God told Jeremiah, he said, I want you to go check this guy out. And this is just my rendition. He said, go go to this place, go look at what this, this potter is doing with the clay. And he goes to the, the potter's house and uh, the clay or the pot, whatever, it, it had some some crooks in it. You know, it didn't look um, as, as as good as it needed to. However, it was it was in the hands of the potter. And he molded it until he was pleased, you know, until he was pleased with his workmanship. The pot didn't have to, um, uh, you know, be stuck in uh, analysis paralysis to, to figure out how it was going to uh, be useful. That thing was in the hands of the one that knew it best. Come on, somebody. And he said, can I not, O house of Israel, deal with you? Can I not? Folks in the chat, can I not anyone that's watching, man of God, women of God, do with you just as the potter did with this? How much more can I do with you? So that is what he's doing with us as we submit to him, as he places us, come on, even under the leadership and authority of individuals. If I can't su submit to somebody, how, am I, how can I be used? You know, how can people submit to me if, I, if I'm also not serving? That's also a, that's a major key to elevation is is serving. And sometimes we even I remember being afraid to serve, y'all. I remember being asked by my spiritual mother, um, uh, Prophet K, to serve in on, on the prayer line. And I was like, oh, I don't know if I can pray for an hour. <laughs> I don't know, you know. And, and it's like I had to realize that Miriam is not about you. It, it's not about you. You know, even your story is about you, but it's not for you. It's really for the people that he's assigned to you, that he's connected to you. And you don't have to be perfect to be used by God. You just got to be willing. All right. And, and the God who made us, he formed us, he called us, knew exactly the choices that we were going to make. And he also made provision for us to prosper as we submit to him. You don't have to have the whole plan figured out. He knows the plan that he has for you. Come on, plans to prosper you, not harm you. Plans for hope and a future. Come on, we don't have to be stuck in analysis paralysis. We don't have to be stuck in that same zip code. I don't have to have it all put together because I'm in the potter's hands. You're in the potter's hands. and He knows where he's taking you. He's trying to change your zip code. He's trying to change your location. Because if you knew all the details for real, for real, it would actually be overwhelming. I mean, just see, you know, imagine... How sometimes we have all of these lists that we actually end up not completing some of those things because it's so big when we start looking at it. So he takes you through this process of little by little because he knows the capacity that you're working with. So he can he meets you where you are. And sometimes we get upset because we don't know that's the process and we want it to happen faster. But he's like, hold on, I'm trying to develop you here so that you can handle this next level. Come on, somebody. <laughs> I'm taking steps with you. You are not alone. It's a step-by-step -step process. Where we become like Christ and we're dying to ourselves, we, we are serving others, not for our own ambition. And I'm not talking about people-pleasing behavior because I, I struggle with that one. Like, I, I struggle hard with that. But we, come, we become Christ-like so people can experience Christ in us. That process can't be rushed, right? You are the salt and the light of the world. You are the salt and the light. I even have this candle. I woke up a couple mornings ago and I kept hearing in my spirit, um, the, the spirit of man is the candle of the Lord. The spirit of man. I have this candle right here that I lit. The spirit of man is the candle of the Lord. That means when people see you, God is wanting them to see the, the, the Christ in you, the God in you. It is no longer I that live, but Jesus Christ living on the inside of me. You are the salt and the light. Some of us have become deluded. You know, we're trying to fit in. We're trying to mask. When you're meant to stand out. When you look back, even look back over the timeline of your life and really, did you ever fit in? Some, some of us are like, okay, no, I never really fit into my family. I never really fit into this. I never really fit into that. And that's because you're actually meant to stand out. 
it wasn't just, it wasn't like about rejection. I said, um, even last night, it wasn't, you know, even when we look at Joseph's story or just, you know, just other characters, even your own life, it re- it wasn't about rejection. Sometimes we end up developing a spirit of offense where we're either offending or we're anticipating offense and we're d- still dealing with, with rejection, but it was really about protection. It was separation so that you could be elevated. But that situation needed to happen in order to sever you for that time so that he could then equip you and develop you and place you in position to then go back and help the family, to then go, go back and help certain individuals that he places in your path or in your assignment. Right? So it's not, it's not, you know, it's, so it's about allowing God again, submission. The spirit of man is the candle of the Lord. Come on, somebody, somebody say, I want to be lit. I want to be lit. I want people, come on, to, to see this star rising on the inside of me, this light. Sometimes we end up preserving ourselves or we've covered the light. But there's some people in in their zip codes, come on, in their locations that are depending on you to show your light and to shine your light. So they can get the help they, they need. Right. So sometimes we're covering ourselves with God is he's like, I want to be your covering. Like he he covered Deborah under that tree and people were coming to her. She had a huge assignment on her life. Lines of people. I need to be able to hear from God. You know, he wants us to be like that tree that is planted by rivers of water that brings forth fruit in its season. So there's a time and a season for everything. So many times we're stuck. Come on, in a past season, we're stuck in a past zip code in, in a past season and, and stagnation because our brain is telling us that it is safer to remain there. The devil is a liar. But God is calling us, come on, to step out of that zip code, to step out of that comfort zone. I'm taking you to a new place. I'm, I want to place you in a new position. Come on, I want to prosper you, even as your soul prospers. It doesn't matter what was stolen from you in the past, because he can restore everything that the canker worm has stolen. And for some folks that are like, what is the canker worm? What is she talking about? It's okay. Because it, it just you maybe you know this verse, John 10 and 10, the enemy His mission is to steal, kill, and destroy. Some of us have experienced sexual trauma. Something was stolen. Some some of that, that the innocence, right? You were exposed to things that you shouldn't have. Maybe you experienced emotional abuse. Maybe you experienced physical abuse, rape, sexual assault, you know, some some crazy stuff. Maybe you you were given up, you know, Um, you grew up in a foster home, group home, you know, maybe you've um, made some bad decisions, but you know what? When God when God looks at you, he, he, he sees himself. <laughs> My God. There is no condemnation to those in Christ Jesus who walk not after the flesh, but after the spirit. So he's calling us so to him to submit to him so we can be restored. And he can even place an acceleration on things for those that are like, oh, did I miss my time? Did I miss it? I said, yeah, I said no too much. I said, no, Lord, can you still use me? Yes, you can still be used. I say, I decree it. Come on, if you were waiting for a sign, this message is it, that you can still be used by God. All right? He's just wanting to prepare us, come on, to grow in wisdom, in stature, and in favor. Those things that you went through, the mistakes that you made, They need it to happen because, look, somebody else is depending on your lesson. So you're full of lessons. You're full of of wisdom. Come on, because when we look to God and we we you know, he he can reframe and refocus our thinking concerning those things. And we can receive wisdom as a result of what we've went through. That can also help somebody else. Come on, I hope this is making sense, <laughs> right? He he wants to touch our hearts. He wants to mold our characters. Come on, right? Tribulation, those trials work patience. That's, the, that's another verse that popped up. Trials and tribulation works patience, 
right? Because many times, like we're just on the go, 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 go. Sometimes we then, you know, we, we uh, you know, forget to have a prayer life and we're just kind of, you know, just monotonous, just going, 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 sometimes even in survival mode. That, you know, that a storm, <laughs> you know, I know there's there are many trials and tribulations or storms that I've been through, challenges that I've been through that really caused me to just stop and press in and pray and just reconnect and plug in and dedicate my heart to God. To see, OK, Lord, you know, I'm you know, I'm sorry, Lord, I want to come back. I, I, I need you, Father. I need you. Even that song just dropped in my spirit today. I need thee. Oh, I need thee. I'm not a singer, but I will sing <laughs> every hour. I need thee. Bless me now, my savior. Come on. You know, those those things work patience because I need to learn lessons. If I don't learn the lesson, I'm going to be stuck in the same cycle. Right. Patience goes against impulsivity, impulsivity, just making irrational decisions. I need that patience so that I can operate according to his pulse and not my impulsivity. Because I, I belong to him. I need to operate. We need to operate according to his heartbeat. Come on. His heart beats for you. All right. I need wisdom in order to navigate out of some sticky situations. You need wisdom to navigate out of some situations that you're in right now to navigate out of some zip code relationships, some zip code re, uh, um, uh, connections. Come on, what is that saying? The, the birds of a, the same feather flock together. A misery loves company, right? If I position myself with individuals who are about that growth, like-minded, who are focused on their relationship with God, some of us need godly connections that I'm likely to maintain consistency and a healthy accountability because of who I'm connected to. I've had to change my connections or allow some connections to just dissolve over the year. That was, you know, for a past season. This is a new season. All right. And I'm on a move. You know, I don't want to miss what God has in store for me. When you even look at Elijah and Elisha, Elijah came to Elisha. Right. He changed his zip code. He left what was familiar, that of his family. He went somewhere else to grow and to learn. Right. Even Jesus was found in the temples. Mary's like, oh, Lord, I, I, I lost God. I, I lost Jesus. Somebody, you know, Amber alert. I lost the son of God. And he's like, zip code. I'm over here. Did you not know I'm about my father's business? And even when you look at Ruth. Ruth said uh, after her, her spouse died, right? And, and Naomi, everybody's, you know, their, their spouses passed away, they're widows. And Naomi is like, well, you can go back home to your people. And Ruth is like, I'm not going back to the same zip code. There's something about your God. There's something about your people. I want to connect with that. I'm not going back to what is familiar because there isn't freedom with, you know, with what is familiar. There's freedom with truth, <laughs> And the truth is you're meant to step out of your comfort zone. Come on, the Holy Spirit leads us into all truth, right? You will know the truth and the truth will make you free. So the places that he's taking you may be unchartered, but the truth is that he is with you and you're not by yourself and you will be successful. He said, wherever, he told Joshua, wherever your feet tread, I know you have Moses, right? And Moses is gone now. But connect to me. Come on. Some of us need to reconnect and allow the Holy Spirit to guide us into all truth. And truth will always override the facts. It will override feelings. Amen. Right. And when my faith meshes with truth and who he says you are and who he says I am, concerning our lives, your zip code begins to change. You begin to grow. Come on, like Jesus, he grew and you begin to grow in wisdom, stature and in favor. You begin to receive what it is that you need in order to navigate out of those situations that you're in or even the situations that he may bring your way. 
So it's recognizing that he's the navigational system. Come on, say somebody say, you know, God, you're my GPS. That God processing processing system is on the inside of you. So you can navigate to a different zip code. Come on, you can be exactly where he wants you to be. Right. And again, the last S is sanctification. That's that process of being set apart. And I, I tapped into this um, earlier as well. You are meant to be set apart. It's not that you were rejected. You're meant to be set apart. Some of us need to refocus. In the clinical world, in the coaching world, we call it refocusing, reframing how you see things, changing your perspective concerning that thing. No, you weren't rejected. You were, you were meant to be set apart. You're meant to stick out. You are set apart. You are a peculiar treasure. He said, if you obey my voice, indeed, my voice, that means there are different voices. Different voices are going to be speaking to you. They may be uh, uh, emotional abusive voices. They may be verbally abusive voices, which you know are telling you that you are inadequate or you're not pretty enough or you're not handsome enough or you do this too much or you're that, you're this or that. You know what I'm saying? But he said, if you obey my voice, come on, there's a there's a way. He's the way, the truth, and the, the life. Come come this way. My sheep hear my voice and keep my covenant. You will be set apart. You will be above a peculiar treasure to me. He said, all the earth is mine. So sometimes we're, again, we have that, that ambition. You know, I want this car. I want this. I want that. And it's not bad to have those things as long as those things, what, don't have you. Right. And I'm not saying it's about keeping the law, you know, like I, the law in, in terms of Old Testament. There's like over what, 700 of them. There are a lot of there's a lot of the laws. Right. The, the, the laws. There's a lot of laws. But it's realizing Jesus did come. He came to fulfill the law. So when as you remain in him and you develop that relationship, the, uh, the natural occurrence is that you are going to die to self. Come on. Some of us are like, I don't want to put myself out there, you know, so we're we're um, focused on maintaining our ego as much as we are uh, keeping ourselves alive. And he's like, no, actually, I want you to die to self, die to all those layers of you. That's actually not you. And as you die to that, come on, you dive into me and you will come come alive. There's a thirst that you actually have that you've been satiating with different things, whether it's hookups or whether it's, you know, men or women or pornography or or substances or or, you know, just all these different things. But it's not actually working. It's not satiating. Even you can have all the money in the world. Well, he said you can gain. What is it? What's the point of gaining all the money just to lose your soul? Come on, somebody. Sanctification is that process of dying to self. So as we develop a relationship with God, this is just what happens. Because remember, he's the potter. We're the clay. We want our mind, our minds to be set on him. We want to have the mindset of Christ as we set our minds on him. So it's realizing you don't even have to preserve yourself in the way that you did. You don't have to focus on the probability of being rejected again or being hurt again. You don't have to put your focus on that because even if this does happen again, it's not going to take you down because in this world, we're going to experience those things. He reigns on the just what and the unjust. We're going to experience those things. The good, the bad, all of that. But he said, be of good cheer. He's overcome the world and in him, you will have peace. Your zip code doesn't have to remain in the past hurts. And it's recognizing as you give all that to him and even invest in counseling, invest in therapy. Don't let the stigma stop you from your healing. Sometimes we allow the stigma of those things to actually stifle us. He said, obey my voice, not, not the voices of all these opinions. Right? So as you do that, in him, you have peace. Yes, there's going to be trials and tribulations, but in him, you have peace. So it's recognizing that with that relationship, you know, just, just begin praying, you know, a few minutes a day. Say if you're not, if there's no prayer line, just begin even by just 
be, being a friend. You don't have to have a King James Version prayer life. Oh, thou father is, you know, it could just talk to him. He knows exactly, you know, what you need. He will meet you and take you to another zip code. And as you as you recognize this, as you recognize this, you you go, you end up going deeper or in higher places in him. And he and he even says it this way. You are seated in heavenly places in Christ Jesus. Come on, your zip code is 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 up there, y'all. It's not even where you are right now. Because you're seated in heavenly places even right now. Like, how amazing is that? I even have the saying, you know, we need to define our DNA. That is my motto, my coaching motto. Define your DNA. Dive into God. Neutralize those negative beliefs. Activate power and purpose. I don't want to be full of self. I want to dive in. I want to explore myself spiritually. I'm just a spirit passing through because my passport, according to Romans 12, says don't even be conformed to this world. My zip code means, you know, in the in my biblical zip code or my spiritual zip code is I'm not even from here. Why am I trying to please the people here with all of these different voices and this chatter? Come on. I'm going to obey that voice. Come on, his voice. I'm going to dive in. I'm going to explore who I am through Christ. I'm going to neutralize those negative beliefs so that I can walk in power. I need truth so I can be free. Right? And it's it's our responsibility Though to, to be willing to say yes and to commit to it and to renew the mind, such as a man thinketh in his heart, right? So is he. Come on, it is time for healing tonight. It is time to for those chains to break. It is time for transformation to begin, so the, you know, deliverance to begin and even deliverance from spirit to whatever may be um, uh, here. You know, it, I, I declare and decree it is going to leave in Jesus name. That is just the beginning. There's a maintenance. Come on, there's a transformation process. There's a process. There's a process. And it's interesting because sometimes we can be so aware, so conscious of, oh, maybe it's a spirit. Maybe it's a spirit. I'm, you know, I've done this too, you know, where I'm just so conscious of, oh, what if it's a demon or this and that, you know, and those things exist. We're, we live in a spiritual world, but even the scripture says it like this, the heart, the heart is deceitful above all. So you mean my heart can deceive me even more than a demon can? Yes. The, the scripture says that y'all look it up. The heart is deceitful above all. So our heart can get us into trouble. What is it? Where your heart is, there will your treasure be also. So, you know, the, the thinking, all this happens in the heart. Guard your heart for out of it flows the issues of life. Because my Bible says you, you will tread on serpents and scorpions and you will not be harmed. So you have authority over those things. But it's what's in the heart, though. We want to give our hearts, come on, to God. We need that healing. We need to invest in healing, professional help, whatever it is that you need, godly counsel. So that you can get back into creativity. Sometimes they're so focused on criticizing ourselves or criticizing other people. And God's like, come on. Again, there's no condemnation. There's no condemnation to those in Christ Jesus. Right. God is calling us back to him. He wants to cultivate us. He wants us to be um, um, passionate about him. He, he already loves you for one. But he wants you to be passionate about him, to be consumed with him. I'm not going to worship my pain anymore. I need somebody to say that in there with their heart. I'm not going to worship those things, my pain, you know, the, the relationships and the betrayals and the friends and the, the people that walked away from me. I'm not going to let that consume me because whatever uh, I'm, I'm focused on in that way, I'm worshiping, I'm giving, I'm assigning worth to it. And things are going to happen. You may feel some type of way, but don't let those things um, perpetuate to the point that you remain in the same zip code of emotions. Come on. It's time to see rejection differently, even. And I know like y'all, I like it. It's it's amazing that the time just flies by. <laughs> it flies by when you're having fun. 
you know, he wants us to see rejection differently. He says, when you're rejected, even for my sake, come on, I'm sure there, there are some individuals, you know, because I, I acted one way at work. I remember I used to act one way at work and act one way here. There are all these different versions of me. That when I started to submit and just explore who I am in Christ, it's, you know, there is this freedom or to just to be this version of me everywhere I am. But I remember it, even in that there is some timidity like, oh, what are they going to say? They're going to be like, oh, she's too spiritual. Or she's too this. And it's like, no. You know, I, I'm, I'm called to be this and this is who I am. There's there's the freedom with allowing yourself to be authentically you with Christ. And that takes courage even. But we even have to be intentional about what we set our minds on. We have to be intentional about healing and transforming and releasing the mental weights. Y'all, if anybody knows about mental weights and distractions, it is I. And that's why I'm in this field. I, I can't go a day without renewing this mind right here. I can't. I can't. And last but not least, the scripture, it says, therefore, God exalted him to the highest place and gave him the name above every name because of his submission, his humility. Come on. He exalts the humble. The name above all names, every knee shall bow. In heaven and in earth, under the earth, every tongue shall confess that Jesus is Lord to the glory of God, the father. Somebody even prophesy over yourself. Come on, my zip code has changed today. I received this message. My zip code has changed today. Type that in the chat. My zip code has changed today. I remember um, uh, amazing prophetess, prophetess Brittany. She was prophesying deep, <laughs> deep one day and was just saying some deep stuff. And I'm like, wow. But and she, the one thing that she said that really stuck out to me is, you know, I can say this, I can prophesy and, and y'all, she, you know, deep prophet, I can say this, but if you don't even believe it, then, then what's it worth? So sometimes it's not even that you need to hear another prophecy from somebody else, but even just, you know, prophesy, prophesy what he's already told you, prophesy those things that you have received from, um, from uh, you know, from true people of God and receive it and believe it. Call things as not as though they are. We follow in his example. Come on, there's a reason he said, let the weak say I am strong. And it's not to say that you're not gonna feel weak at times. No, because that's, that's just, you know, it, no, no. But he's saying, call it as not, because then it what it is an acknowledgement. Lord, I need you. I need your strength in my weakness. Your strength is made per, uh, perfect. Let the poor say I am rich. My bank account may look like this right now. Come on, somebody. I remember praying. I've been praying. I was praying hard. One scripture. Y'all, I had this encounter. Um, Deep spiritual encounter you know, with angels in, in, in this dream. And I knew, you know, I knew they were angels later on, but they told me these, these three chapters to pray out. And it was a time where I was going through a lot of um, spiritual warfare. They highlighted three chapters in Psalms for me to pray out. And one of the prayers, like one of the scriptures in one of those chapters says, Lord, teach me your way so I can rely on your faithfulness. So I, I was going hard. The, the tribulation made me press in. Come on. I needed that tribulation. Otherwise, I would have been in a certain zip code. But he's like, I'm trying to take you here. So I got to disrupt some things. And that prayer said, teach me your way so I could be reliant on your faithfulness. And when I prayed that prayer, I thought the floodgates of heaven was just going to open and I was just going to be a millionaire because that's what he's shown me and this and that. But actually, my bank account dried out. <laughs> <laughs> I'm like, Lord, you know, my kids acting crazy. You know, what's going on? Things are happening with my marriage. But he's like, actually, I'm putting things in order because there are things in your house that are actually out of order that you've become desensitized to. You become you you've normalized some of these things. And I want to elevate you spiritually. So I got to disrupt some things. And now I'm teaching you my way so you can be reliant on me day by day. I want to be in relationship with you. So it's not the circumstance that is representative of where you're going. You got to still continue to believe and receive, believe and receive and embrace the truth of his plan for you.
Come on, no more limitations. Speak that over yourself. No more excuses in Jesus' name. My mind is set on him so I can have the mindset of Christ in Jesus' name. So I'm going to end in prayer. Or, you know, if, if there are any prayer requests, I can take some prayer requests. Because I don't want to keep you past. I don't want to keep you too long. And I do want to just go over how you can connect with me. And if there are no prayer requests, I'm just going to, what I'll tell you is a way that you can connect with me. If you're not already, um, you can uh, visit my, I, so I pray this blessed you. You can visit my website, which is um, a contact page, bonus.defineyourdna.com. Okay. And for those that are like on the self-directed journey, you've experienced some trauma or, or uh, you know, you're wanting to answer God's call on your life. There are two books that I have. Uh, the first one is The Courage to Answer God's Calling on Your Life. There it is right there. And you can get that on Amazon. You could just Google that. You can put it in Amazon, The Courage to Answer God's Calling Your Life. I also have a, a second book, How to Heal from Sexual Trauma and Find Peace. You can get that on Amazon as well. And y'all, I'm going to go ahead and pray, your, pray us out. So dear Lord, I just thank you for your word on today, Father. I thank you, oh Lord God, that the spirit of man, Father, is the candle of the Lord. So I just thank you, Lord God, that your people are, are leaving lit tonight, Father. Lord God, that there is a fire, Lord God, Jesus, that Lord God is all over them right now, Father. If anyone, Lord God, that is going through something that is experiencing heaviness, Father, I bind, I come against every spirit of, of torment, of heaviness right now in Jesus name. Lord God, I thank you, Lord God. I pray that even, Lord God, you said if we ask for wisdom, you will give it to us in abundance. And Lord Jesus, you grew in wisdom, in stature, and in favor, Father. So Lord God, I just pray for wisdom, Lord God, a deposit, an impartation of wisdom into your people, Lord God, so they know how to navigate. Lord God, let truth come in. Come on, Psalms 51 and 6. Let truth come into their inward parts right now. I pray ministering angels even go and touch. Come on, some of you may even feel a presence around you. Some of you may feel the presence. Come on, those are angels around you that are responding, that obey the voice of the Lord. Hallelujah. So I thank you, Father, for the angels, Lord God, that are around. Lord God, Jesus, your people, Father. Oh, Lord God, I thank you, Lord God, for healing. If anyone, Lord God, is experiencing any infirmity or sickness, Father, be healed right now in Jesus name. Come on, get up and walk. Hallelujah. I come against pain. I, I curse it to the root in Jesus name. Father, I thank you, Lord God, that they, I decree over them power, love, and a sound mind. I come against any mental torment. I mute the enemy from speaking to you in Jesus name. Come against lust and perversion in Jesus name. Hallelujah. I thank you, Father, Lord God, for guiding in them, Lord God, and ordering their steps even after this, Lord God, is over. Even, Lord God, on tomorrow, Lord God. And I thank you that you're mercies are new every morning, Lord God. And I thank you, Lord God. And I just let me even just lead in a prayer for those that are, you know, wanting to give their life to Christ. Hallelujah. Jaki, I'm going to pray for you that for those that are wanting to give their life to Christ to say, Jesus, I acknowledge that you died for me. And I want to, um, I want you to come into my heart. Please come into my heart. God is, he's visiting you right now. He's visiting you and he's going to lead you, connect yourself, come on to a ministry, um, continue. Come on, he's gonna lead you. He's gonna order your steps. He's gonna tell you exactly where to grow, uh, where to go so that you can grow. And Lord, I pray for my sister Jaquia right now, Father. Lord God, I thank you. You know exactly what is in her heart. Oh Lord God, you know what the, the, the desires are, Lord God. You know, Lord God, what's going on in her household even, Father. Oh Lord God, so I just thank you, Lord God, for visiting her right now, Lord God. I thank you, Lord God, for touching her, Lord God, her, Lord God, Jesus, her womb, Lord God. I 
thank you, Lord God, for touching, oh, Lord God, Jesus, her father. I thank you, Lord God, Jesus, for healing, Father. Oh, Lord God, I thank you, Lord God, Jesus, for opening up, Lord God. I thank you for a miracle happening in her life, Father. Oh, Lord God, let signs and wonders follow her, Lord God. Oh, Lord God, Jesus, I thank you that you're doing the miracle signs and wonders, even, Lord God, in this day and age, Father. Lord God, for you the same yesterday, today, and forevermore. You have not changed, oh, Lord God. So we just thank you, Lord God, Jesus, for the transformation. We thank you, Lord God, for the testimony that is going to come from your daughter. We thank you, Lord God, for touching her marriage, Lord God, her children. Oh, Lord God, we thank you, Father, Lord God, for touching her businesses, Father. We thank you, Lord God, Jesus, that, Lord God, for fruit, Lord God, Jesus, allowing her to be fruitful, Lord God. We thank you, Lord God, Jesus, for restoration, Lord God, and changing her zip code spiritually, Lord God, that she may go to higher heights in you in Jesus' name. Amen. 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 Is there another prayer request before I get off? And that's okay if you've received everything that you need to receive for now. I know he's done a great thing. He has done great things. Come on. He has done great things. He has done great things. Bless his holy name. Come on. That's old school. <laughs> That is old school right there. All right. So I'm going to go ahead and log off. God bless you. Jesus loves you. And I love you as well. God bless.